How's it going guys? Today we're going to do a video which is a little bit different than what I normally do because this isn't a review for G Fuel. This is actually a review and how to create this item you see behind me in LEGO Fortnite. This one is definitely different from most other creations I made because this one actually works and it goes left, it goes right, it kind of goes up and it goes down. You can hold up to four different people and it's just fun overall and it's definitely very creative. There's a lot of different mechanics in it. It's actually very simple how it works. But just how it works is pretty cool. But we're going to give you a quick demonstration how this looks and how it works. And I can make that go as high as I want to. Alright, so all you do is hit the A button, go forward. Knife one go up, press the Y. Now you might hear cracks here and there, that's just pretty standard in most of these. It's not going to damage it, it just how Lego Fortnite is. But you see, it works. It doesn't break. And I can switch direction how this one spins. I go back up. And then gravity bring me back down. So, it is very fun. It's interesting. And just, overall, it's something pretty cool to have in your world. Just to pass time and different things like that, so just constantly farming and everything. But we're gonna show you how to make this. Best bet, first off, is try to find a flat area similar to this, something like that, go around and find another area similar, and be right back. All right, this area works right here, but got a few things here, so kinda had to do some destroying. Well, a little bit of demolition here. All right, found a good spot. Probably got a little bit of a fixture there, so let's destroy it. Yeah, some fun in the process. God, I love explosions. Now, as long as you have a flat area, you don't really have to create a full base. You can just start with the centerpiece and then work around that, which is basically what I did with that other area, as you can see in the distance. So we're going to start with the 16 by 16 concrete block. And we're going to go 7 high. Six. And there's 7. Right, so we got 7 high. Now you want to do the, the granite foundation, the standard 4x4. Four four. Put that right in the center. At this point you can go as high as you want. I'm probably going to go maybe 10 high. It should be good. Obviously, if you're doing this in survival mode, it'll be different because you don't have options for this one. You have to use the little individual small pieces. So exact measurement is up to you, however high you want to go, or however small you want to go. Next thing you want to do is take the 16 by 4 block. And basically all you're doing is just creating a foundation to help support the main base. So you want to put one on each corner. Go. Now you want to go to your dynamic foundations, and you want to take the small dynamic foundations, 8x16s. Initially you want to put this one dead center. As long as it's dead center you're good, so you should have basically six dots on each side. And you want to go back two. This is going to be taken off after we do the initial three, because we need it now for a structure or foundation to help hold the rest of these pieces in place. Then you're going to do that one right next to it. Still two back. So that way it goes even right there. But now since you have that, you can destroy this one. So destroy that. And since these two are connected, they won't drop. If you were to just put one on there, like say this and it's partially off it'll fall right off so you want to make sure you create that foundation will actually stay so put one more there and one more there now you got your full base here now at this point you can go out more all you'll do is just connect more around the edges there and do that all the way around you can make this as big as you want 
but the only thing I realized when you make it really big, it's gonna be a lot of weight. It's mostly concrete in there. So you wanna have ways to be able to push that up and push it left and right, but you're gonna run out of spaces toward the end. So just doing a single one like this, it's fine. It should definitely hold it. At that point, you wanna to go to your flooring. You can use whatever flooring you want. Me, I like the beachy one because it's just plain white. It's clean looking. It looks overall pretty well. It looks pretty good in my opinion. Now at this point you can pick whatever flooring you want. Just take the 8x8 piece and you want to make this cover the entire base. There we go. Now that's completely centered. Now at this point you want to put some tires down. You want to take the large simple wheel and you want to make it as center as you can and make it so it's just touching that block. So when you see red, just go back one and that's where you want it. That allows it to spin. Same thing with this, perfectly centered, right on line. And do that all the way around. There's our base. Now you want to go to your rockets and you want to give it the upward thrust. Since this is smaller, you could basically do just four. And having that there, that center line at this point does make it easier because you can put one there and one there and it actually makes everything pretty well spaced. So you want to take this, make it right to that point. Drop that. that and do that around all corners there we go now that should be perfectly balanced now you want to do is go to your supports and I use this you can use the rustic beams if you don't have the beachy set I like this one because it's just a lot cleaner looking and it actually kind of goes with the theme I'm doing. Now I can use this one that has a line, but probably will look a little bit better if you use the plain one like that. Now what you want to do is get this right on the line. Just like that. Then do another one right there. We can do this on every corner initially. So that makes it easier to put the rest in. There you go. Now you have all four corners in. You want to put one more row directly below it. Same way you did that. And just connect them all. Initially, you won't be able to with that there, so we'll come back to that part. There we go. Now that's done, you want to go to your fencing and take the beachy rail corner. This is where the beachy set comes in handy because it makes it very even. If you don't have that, if you do say the wood foundation one, then you can probably get away with this pillar here and that pretty much do about the same. So we're gonna go back to this piece here. You can even change it up a little bit if you wanna do that just for character. So, but we're gonna do this for right now. And you wanna do this right up to the edge. And you're going to have a little gap below, but that's not going to mess anything up. There we go. Now that that's done, you want to put up four balloons around the edge. 
right on the corner. Now this shouldn't allow any lift off because it has enough weight to keep it down. But we are going to bring this up some to put the bottom wheels on. Now to give a little bit extra lift off, I put one more on each corner here. Helps keep it also more balanced. There we go. That's good. Now you want to put a fencing around it. You can use any fence you want. I want to use a Durberger takeout railing. It just has that kind of added effect to having the white with the blue. It just looks pretty good overall. So you want to put that down and two should fit perfectly fine. These are at 12 spaces a piece. Right. Now that the wheels and the balloons are everything is up on the top part, you want to put something on top there so this don't go flying off. So in order to do that, you can do a couple different ways. You can just put down a 16 by 16 block. You can make it a little bit bigger if you want. A 16 by 16 block should be just fine as far as putting it up there. And when it hits it, the tires will hit it first and it won't fly off. So I just put that dead center. Now what we want to do is put down a floor base. I'm going to use a dining floor. And then you want to put a fire up there. right in the center. Now there's a couple different things you can do. If you want to stay with the blue it makes it a little bit harder because it doesn't actually fit 100% but we're going to try a different flooring or different fencing around that. These are from the castle set so that works just great. So put one of these on each corner. If you don't have the castle set, you can just use a standard railing. Now, place one of these right in the center. Now we're going to go one more higher. Back your flooring and you can use any 16 by 16 block you want. I'm going to stay with the dining floor. And what else this does, which is kind of neat, when you have it too high, it puts out the flame so you don't see the smoke, but you get all the light. So as long as you're two fence high in there, it basically just turns into a beacon. So that actually works really well. Anything less, you're still going to see a smoke. All right, so now that that's done, you want to try and lift this up so you can put the tires beneath it. In order to do that, you just need a couple large balloons. Right. Put one in each corner. back to your large tires and just same thing make sure it's perfectly center and rail on the line basically it's gonna go right in the middle of those sometimes when it shifts that can cause that problem where it doesn't want to go all the way in
There we go. As you see, all four tires are at the exact same placement as the top ones. They're right in the center. It's holding it on the pillar where it's have a perfect pivoting end. Now since it's up in the air, we can actually fill in this one spot. So you'll go back to your support and use whichever one you like. I'll stick with this one to keep it clean. There we go. Now that that's done, we're gonna go down and break these four blocks here because they're done. All you do is pop these four balloons that you initially put up, and it should drop right down, and it's not going to crash. Those balloons that are on it are going to help bring it down nice and smooth. There we go. Now granted, it can take a little bit of time. Because if you want, you can actually break these four center balloons there, and it should come down a little bit quicker. But going straight down, it does have a little bit of friction, so it does hold. It doesn't go down as quickly as you would want to. But it does go down, as you can see. It's moving. It just takes a little bit of time for it initially to go down. There we go. Now everything's placed, centered. All right, so you want to go to your thrusters. You want to take the large thrusters and do at least three each. Make it right on the center there. Go one, two, and three. And you want to do that for all four sides. Now, if you want to turn both ways, which is optional, you can add three more the exact same way you did that. So I'm going to do that also. So I do three again. Make sure everything is perfectly centered because that allows it to actually have that perfect turn radius. There we go. All your thrusters are on. The last thing you want to do is create the actual ride on. And in order to do that, you want to take a center pillar. I always do the castle corner, which actually works pretty well. And you want to take that, put it right on the edge here. Do that on all four sides. So now you have your support beam, then you want to go to your flooring, and you want to do a 12 by 2. And bring it out. You want to have it stick out this direction, but you want to go two together like that. And do the same thing with this. And got by that. Now you want to go back to the toys and to the third tab over. You want to do vehicle base. Have it where the round end sits outward and the seat end sits inward. Make it perfectly centered, just like that. Go one in, one out. There we go. Now as far as controls, there's where it gets a little interesting. You can have all four have controls where if you have four people playing it, one person can be sitting there and decide, hey, I want to go right, and the other one makes want to go left, and it kind of gets a hang up and does a lot of different things, so it adds to the enjoyment factor of it. You can do it that way, because if you have multiple people, you can have some fun that way. But if not, then you just basically go and do one, and then the other ones are just regular seatings. So we're going to do it so there's four each. Now you want to go to the large driver's seat. Place that right inside. Now you can add some lighting to it. You can do whatever you want. 
as far as decorations and different things like that. But this is the basis. The only thing really left to do is to set the channels for all these thrusters. Now as far as what channels to put them on, well, the way I design mine is if I'm going up, I want it to be the top button on my controller. So channel one is actually Y, so that'd be the first one to go up. So you wanna to go to your wrench, set these, do channel one. And do that all the way around to the bottom ones. Now, as far as these thrusters, you want to have them go right and left. What I make it to make it easier is if you have your right button, which in this case is B on the Xbox controller, that would be turning your right, and then your left button, which is the X on the controller, would turn you that way. Right, so I just set these to channel two. And we just have a supply drop come in. I have to check that out in a minute. So now you want to do the other side. This would be channel three. And there are pretty much set. So those can just leave as is. You don't have to worry about changing anything. And that's pretty much it. There's not much else to do other than some lighting, aesthetics, different things that you want to do to it. But that is basically the ride. So just sit inside. If you want to go left, hit the A. Go right, hit B. Go up, hit Y. And you can switch on the fly. The one thing about this, since the fact that the wheels are only facing around it, it causes it to go down real slow if you don't have a left or right thruster going on at the same time. So when you're going up, if you just go up normal, it's going to take a minute. It's not going to go up normal. It's not going to go up that fast. But as long as you're using one of your turning thrusters, it goes up really good because those are acting pretty much like a corkscrew. So it's allowing it to ride up it and ride down it. So that's where the basic mechanic comes in with this. It has a bit of a corkscrew effect. It doesn't really necessarily ride up it. It corkscrews up it. So that's the best way of putting it, how this actually works. And that's what makes it interesting because it's not your standard mechanics not just rolling up rolling down it's turning up and turning down so that's how this is built this is basis of how it is and it works very well it does not break you can make this as high as you want and at far distance i have another one that i created that's basically twice the size of that so we're going to go there and be right back As you see, this is another one I created. It's very similar. It does not have the other turning rockets on there. It turns very well with just the rockets placed there and there. It's just not as fast of a turn. So you can add more rockets, it gives it more of that spin, a lot of different things you can do with it. But just having it in that corner and the other corner, it does turn it, it does the job. And this one I had to have a few more rockets on the bottom because that's a lot more lift off. But you can see this is a lot bigger. It's pretty high. So we're going to get in this one and I'm going to show you what it looks like. And it does go up a lot faster too. Let's ask how many more rockets. And as you can see, we're up pretty high. It's just overall, it's a very fun ride to have. All right, now that ride's over. Right, we're going to head back to the ride we were just making. We're going to put a few cosmetics on it. Be right back.
I hope you enjoyed watching this. This is something that was definitely interesting to create and it definitely blew up. I love this, this ride. It actually works very well. It's decorative. I like how it looks. It's clean. It's just fun overall. But if there's anything else you guys like to see me create, just let me know in the comments below. As always, if you purchase gfuel.com, use code DARKSCORPION77 and save up to 30% off your orders. As always, thanks for watching.